a feast for the eyes, unraveling the mystery of Peter de Ring's culinary canvas. Hi, young art enthusiasts. Gather round as we embark on a whimsical journey back to the 17th century, where artists like Peter de Ring were making waves with their masterpieces. Today, we unveil the secrets behind still life with Golden Goblet, a painting that's as rich in flavor as it is in history. So, what are you looking at? Imagine stepping into a grand dining hall adorned with velvety drapes and golden chandeliers. Amidst this opulence sits a table that would make King Midas green with envy. Every inch is covered with the finest delicacies of the land and sea. At center stage is a golden goblet so magnificent, it could very well be the holy grail Indiana Jones was so keen on finding. It's surrounded by an orchestra of flavors, juicy grapes that look like they've been plucked from Dionysus' own vineyard, peaches so succulent that even Aphrodite would approve. But wait, there's more. A lobster red as sunset and oysters fresh from Neptune's garden join the feast. And let's not forget about those citrusy delights, an orange and peeled lemon adding a zesty twist to this visual symphony. Dering was no ordinary artist, he was a magician who wove enchantment into every stroke. Each element in this painting isn't just food but a character in an epic tale of opulence, celebrating nature's bounty. But why did he paint such a lavish scene? Was he a foodie who loved to indulge in gastronomic pleasures? Was he a show-off who wanted to flaunt his wealth and status? Or was he a rebel who challenged the norms of his society? The truth is, we don't know for sure. Dering was a mysterious man who left behind few clues about his life and motives. But we can make some educated guesses based on the context of his time and place. You see, Dering lived in the Dutch Golden Age, a period of prosperity and cultural flourishing in the Netherlands. It was also a time of exploration and trade, which brought exotic goods and influences from faraway lands. The Dutch were fascinated by the new and the foreign, and they expressed their curiosity and appreciation through art. De Ring was one of the many artists who specialized in still-life painting, a genre that depicted objects such as flowers, fruits, animals, and household items. Still-life paintings were not just realistic representations of things, they were also symbolic expressions of ideas and values. For example, the Golden Goblet in De Ring's painting could symbolize the wealth and power of the Dutch Republic, which was one of the leading economic and military forces in Europe. The fruits and seafood could symbolize the abundance and diversity of nature, which the Dutch admired and exploited. The Chinese dish could symbolize the trade and cultural exchange between the East and the West, which the Dutch facilitated and benefited from. But there's another layer of meaning to De Ring's painting that might surprise you. You see, the Dutch were also very religious and moralistic people, who followed the teachings of the Protestant Reformation. They believed that worldly pleasures and possessions were distractions from God and salvation. They warned against the dangers of greed, gluttony, and vanity, which could lead to sin and damnation. So, De Ring's painting could also be seen as a moral lesson, a reminder of the fragility and futility of life. The fruits and seafood, as delicious as they look, will soon rot and decay. The golden goblet, as shiny as it is, will lose its luster and value. The Chinese dish, as exotic as it is, will break and shatter. Everything in this painting is temporary and perishable, except for one thing, the eternal light of God, which shines through the window and illuminates the scene. De Ring's painting, then, is a paradox, a contradiction, a riddle. It invites us to marvel at the beauty and bounty of the world, but also to question our attachment and desire for them. It challenges us to find the balance between enjoying and renouncing, between living and dying, between heaven and earth.